Hey there, Stampers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Happy Friday. Um, my name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada, and I am excited to share today another one sheet wonder that I came up with using this beautiful perennial lavender DSP. We're going to use this specific sheet here. Um, so you can look forward to that. We're going to create six cards today and they're pretty simple cards and just know that you do not need to have these products in order to take inspiration from this. Um, you can use anything that you have on hand. These designs are simple enough that you can replicate over and over and over again. All right, so before we get started here, I just wanna mention a few things because we are welcoming a new month. So we're in the month of February and of course that means there's some new um, promotions and things. So most of you know that it is celebration time. So until February 29th, when you make a qualifying purchase uh, for every $60, basically here in Canada, um, you get to choose something out of the celebration brochure absolutely free. And February 1st, Stampin' Up! released more celebration items for you to choose from. So if you've picked up everything that you wanted in the celebration brochure or there's nothing that jumped out at you, then just know that there's some brand new products that they've released. Some of them are from the annual catalog. There's a couple kits, there's a few stamp sets, but some of them are from the January to April mini catalog. So new product. And I mean, a full set of a uh, stamp, uh, not a full set, a set of markers as well, which is super fun. So you can find those online. Um, and again, those are while supplies last until February 29th. And then, now this is something that is a little bit of a sneak peek. Demonstrators have the, one of the perks of being a demonstrator is having the opportunity to pre-order product before they go live to customers. And Stampin' Up! just released to demonstrators a bunch of new products in that will that you'll be able to find in the online exclusive sections section of our website in March. And here's a little peek at one of the suites that we can pre-order. And there's a fun new coffee suite as well, which I'm super excited about. Um, and a bunch of other great products. And I wanted to point this out today to you because um, not only can demonstrators pre-order it right now, but if you take advantage of the fabulous deal of the starter of purchasing the starter kit that's on until February 29th, you can include these pre-order products in your starter kit. So you can get that those brand new products, fill your starter kit with that or a combination of things. So it's a great deal. So if you would like more information on purchasing the starter kit, just reach out to me. I'm happy to fill you in on that. Now let's jump in to today's crafting projects. All right. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Karen. Thank you for joining me. All right. So today I've chosen a piece of pattern paper from the Perennial Lavender Paper Pack uh, because I've been having fun playing with this. Uh, you may have seen that this month's Class to Go features this sweet. Um, and I'll share a little peek at... I think four of those projects a little bit later on in this video, but we're going to create six cards from this one sheet of pattern paper. We're going to use the entire sheet of pattern paper. So if you want to create these projects, then here are some of the things that I've pulled out. And again, it doesn't have to be this pattern paper. You can choose any pattern paper that you want. All right. So you will need three thick white card bases. You will need two note card and envelopes. You'll need one four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of coordinating cardstock. I've chosen gorgeous grape. You'll need two pieces of white cardstock that measures three that measure three by four and a half inches. And I've gone ahead and embossed those. Okay. And then I'm going to use two sheets of these beautiful butterfly die cut pieces. So we're going to do two of these. Oh, I don't have two full sheets. Okay, well, we'll see. I can always grab some more. 
Um, so we're gonna use two of those and then you'll need an extra piece of white just to cut some other pieces, do some die cutting and then do some stamping as well. And then of course your pattern paper. Okay, now the products that I'm using today, and again, you can choose something similar. It doesn't have to be this. I am using the perennial postage bundle, but I'm also throwing in the something fancy stamp set as well. Um, because when I do these one sheet wonders, the first thing that I determine is I try to figure out what, what types of cards I need. And right now at the beginning of the month, I always need congratulations cards or well done or, you know, cards of that nature so that I can send to my team for, um, their accomplishments the previous month. So because there wasn't, I mean, there's your simply marvelous, which would be great. Um, but I used that greeting on my cards last month. So I didn't want to use the same greeting. So I went through and the card designs that I'm using today, um, work really well with long, narrow greetings. So there was a congratulations in the something fancy. So that's what I'm going to do. But these cards can be used for any, um, any occasion at all. All right. Uh, and I think one of them I'm turning into a birthday card as well. Okay, so those are the products that I'm using. Of course, I've got my die cut machine. I am actually going to use this heartfelt hexagon punch for one of the cards, um, which I don't think that particular punch is available at the moment. I think it is temporarily unavailable. Um, so I apologize for that, but any shape punch would work. Okay, so let's start by cutting in to our patterned paper. Now, if your patterned paper is directional, um, you're going to want to rotate it. So this is directional paper because our butterflies are kind of flying this way. It just, it works better than this. It could go this way as well. Okay. But anyways, if your paper is directional, you want it to go sideways. So you're going to put it sideways and you're going to cut at Okay, our first cut mark is going to be five and a quarter inches. Okay, and then this piece, we're going to actually score it while we have our paper trimmer out. So I'm gonna score it at four inches. And eight inches. Okay, and then we'll set that piece aside. Then this leftover piece that we have, we're going to cut a three quarter inch strip. Line that up with the three quarter inch mark. I'm gonna cut that. And then I'm gonna trim this down to nine and a half inches. This piece, I'm gonna flip it over because I'm gonna use this side and put it with that. This I'm gonna set aside. This is gonna be a scrap. We'll use that on the inside somewhere. Okay, so now you should have a six by 12 inch piece left. So we are gonna cut another three quarter inch strip. I'm just gonna cut it off the bottom. It doesn't matter if you cut it off the bottom or the top. So three quarter inches. So that's three quarter by 12. We're gonna use that to decorate the insides of our cards as well. And then this piece, we're gonna cut into three, four inch pieces. Okay, all right, we'll set that aside. Now I'm gonna have a look at my patterns and determine which way I want them to go. Okay, so the butterflies are all going the right way. We'll set those aside and let's start with, okay, so now I'm going to look at these and I'm going to figure out what we're going to do is we're going to take these dies and we're going to cut a hole in one of them. So you want to determine if it's a piece of pattern paper like this, where, you know, every bit that you cut just looks a little bit different. Um, then you just want to figure out which one you want to put a hole in. So I can put a hole in the center here. And that would save this from being so busy. 
I can put a hole here. Then I'm cutting out my butterfly. Same with this. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. There, it's going to look good. But I think I'm going to take some of this busyness away from this card. So I'm going to cut the center out of this. So I'm going to bring in my my Stampin' Cut and Emboss. I'm going to set those pieces aside. Let's move this. We'll bring this in. So I'm just going to line this up. My camera is pretty close this morning, so. All right. And so you can do it right in the center. I think I might go. Yeah, no, I'm going to do it right in the center. But I am going to put my cardstock a little bit at an angle. So rather than lining it up so it's parallel with the opening, I'm going to put it at a little bit of an angle. But this piece is still straight with the edge of my cardstock. And the reason why I like doing that is because when you're using a straight edge die like this, it goes into your machine a little bit better when it's at an angle. So if you have one of the corners heading into your machine first, rather than the straight edge going in all at once. And it avoids all those loud cracking noises when you do that as well. We'll set that aside, bring this in. I'm a little crooked. Hopefully we can fix that so that it's not as noticeable. All right, so we've got these two pieces now. I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna work on two cards at once actually. I'm gonna bring in one of my white card bases, the full size card base, and one of my note cards. And let's work on them side by side. Um, now, if you don't have note cards, this card design will work with a regular size card as well. You'll just have a little bit of a bigger border all the way around the edges. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring in one of my embossed pieces. And I've used the softly sophisticated embossing folder. So this is actually part of a bundle. It comes with a stamp set as well. And it is a celebration item. So you can earn it, you can receive it for free with a qualifying purchase of $120. Um, so you get the embossing folder and the stamp set. And I love this embossing folder. It's such a simple, um, simple pattern. And I love that it can be used in both directions as well. So I'm going to distress this just a little bit. So take my snips and just kind of go around the edges. And I've already done two sides because I didn't want to sit here and you have to watch me do it all. So I've done two sides. That's going to go on here. This is going to go on there like that. And... Then I've got some pieces that I've pre-cut. So I've got this smaller, this is the one, two, this is the third smallest rectangle. So the, the window was cut with the fourth smallest. This is the third smallest cut with white. And then we're gonna bring in some of our butterflies. So I'm gonna set these two pieces aside. I'll bring in my sheet of butterflies. So I'm going to use this largest one and this medium sized one, um, the side view of the butterfly. And we're going to add a little bit of color. So they look great like this and there's lots of ways that you can add color to them. But my favorite way is to use my blending brush. So I'm going to use some gorgeous grape ink and I'm going to figure out which direction I want my butterflies to fly in and I think I want them going this way so that it looks like they're flying off of the card when you open it rather than towards the fold of the but of the card. So I've got my purple blending brush and I'm just going to lightly go around the edges of the butterfly just to add a little bit of purple. So, and you can see that I don't have a scrap piece of paper underneath. I've just got my glass mat, which I absolutely love. I love that I don't have to use a scrap piece of paper. The glass mat 
can just be wiped down afterwards. So it's easy to clean up. And this is something that you can actually get for free when you purchase the starter kit until February 29th. So it comes with this gray mat. It also comes with this silicone mat as well. So this mat here that I have kind of placed to the side. And so I just wet this cloth and I'm just gonna give it a wipe. And normally I have a paper towel just to dry it so that it dries a little bit quick, more quickly, but I do not have a paper towel handy. So we'll just give it a second. It doesn't take long for it to the water to evaporate. Okay, so my butterflies, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna use my bone folder and very carefully curl up the wings so it looks like they're flying off of our card. Just like that. Now for our greeting, I'm gonna use that congratulations from that stamp set, uh, something fancy. And I'm just gonna use some black ink. So I've got my memento ink that I've set on my rubber mat that is off camera. And I've got some just narrow strips of white. And I'm gonna ink this up. And normally I stamp and then cut down We'll see how straight this goes on. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. So I'm gonna stamp both of these because we're gonna I'm gonna turn them both into a congratulations card. But any greeting that's kind of long and narrow like this will work just fine. Oops. All right, set that aside. Okay, so this is dry now, we're good. I'm gonna bring back my pieces and we'll start assembling. So I've got my white card base. Just use my bone folder to make it nice and crisp. And then we'll use some multi-purpose glue to stick this down. So you could flip this over and use this side as well, which is quite nice. But I think the other side is, is pretty. So we'll use the other side. So I'm just using some multi-purpose glue that's gonna go in the center. So we've got about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then this piece is going to get popped up using dimensionals. It's gonna go right in the center to give it a bit of dimension. And then we're gonna take our big butterfly, actually we're gonna take our greeting first. So we'll take one of our congratulations and I'm just gonna angle cut it. And then cut it straight on this side. And I'm gonna flip this over. <clears throat> and just trim one of the edges here to add a partial dimensional. We'll add a little bit of multi-purpose glue here. And then this is gonna go across like this. So right there. Then we'll add a little bit of multi-purpose glue here We're gonna add our butterfly. And then I'm gonna pull in some of these purple, I think they're called fine shimmer gems. So we'll use a few of these to add a little bit, a little bit of sparkle on here. We'll do one here. All right. So there is card number one. We'll go ahead and embellish that, the inside of that one in a moment. I'm gonna take my note card and we'll finish this one. So I love our note cards and envelopes. I always have a couple packages of these on hand. If you're looking for quick and easy cards, note cards are the best because they come pre-cut scored and with envelopes. You get a package of 20, they're reasonably priced 
and it saves the, saves the step of having to score and cut your card bases. And this size is mailable. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then this piece is gonna go in the center. And again, we could do it, we can do it this way or we could flip it over and use this side. But again, I'm gonna add the one that, with a little bit more color. That's gonna go in the center. Okay, and then we'll add our greeting. If I can pick it up, there we go. And again, I'll angle cut this one side and then trim this so it's straight. And this time I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna kind of curl it so it looks almost like a wave. And then I'll take just the edge of a dimensional and I'm gonna pop that in the raised bit and then just a little bit of multi-purpose glue on either side. And that's gonna go right here. Like that, we'll add a little bit of glue to our butterfly. And you do wanna make sure that your butterflies don't hang over the edge so that your card will fit nicely into your envelope. And then we'll add our gems. You can tell I've used a ton of these gems. So pretty, because this suite coordinated with uh, this month's paper pumpkin kit, I've just been using it like crazy. So there we go, there's our first two cards. Oh, like I said, we were gonna add a little bit of pattern to the inside. So let's use this longer strip and we'll add, let's see here. We're gonna add a strip across the top Just like that and we can trim it you could always cut this piece down into three four inch lengths if you want but I'm just gonna do this and there is card number one and then let's add this on the inside as well we'll do this one on the inside of this one And then we'll trim this off. So now we've got this piece and this piece that we're using, we've got as scraps. So there are our first two cards. And let me share another alternate with you using a different pattern paper. So here is another one. So this one I used a celebration paper, um, adorning hearts maybe, I think. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's kind of like a love themed, but it's got some great gold in it as well. So exactly the same card design. I just switched out the DSP and the card looks so very different. So there is another alternate for you. All right. Okay. Let's move on to card number two. Oh, I guess it would be three and four. Uh, let's set these here. Okay. All right. So we're gonna set these two aside. I'll bring them all back afterwards and show you guys. Okay, so for this one, we are gonna do a little bit of die cutting again. So again, I'm gonna have a look at these. We're gonna do the same thing, except we're not gonna cut out of the center. This time we're gonna cut out of the bottom. So I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go with this one. All right. So I will bring back my stamping cut and emboss. And 
now we're going to do the same thing. So again, I'm going to put my paper in at an angle. And I'm going to die cut this so that I have kind of an even border on the three sides. So the left, the right, and the bottom. I think that looks pretty close. Carefully put that on there so it doesn't move and we'll feed it through. Okay, so now we have these two pieces. And we'll bring back, we'll bring in a white card base. So this is gonna go on here like this. We'll bring in our other note card and envelope. And this one is gonna go on here. We'll bring in that other piece of embossed cardstock. So this is embossed using that same embossing folder. I've already distressed around the edges. So that's gonna go on here. And our butterflies that we're going to use. So we are going to use this full butterfly and actually both full butterflies. So those two. All right. And we'll start by adding our ink. So because these they're full butterflies, we don't really need to determine which direction they're going to fly or what side we need to add color to. And I've already got lots of ink still left on my blending brush, so I didn't even bother dipping it into my ink. But again, just like the last card, I'm just adding ink around the edges. And we'll just give that a quick wipe. All right, again, same thing. We're gonna take our bone folder, curl up the wings. And, okay. Now I've got a narrow strip and then I've also got um, that third smallest rectangle that I've stamped. Okay, so for the narrow one, I'm gonna use that same congratulations stamp. I'm gonna stamp that on here. And then for for this one, I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger greeting. So I'm going to do the Your Simply Marvelous. And I'm going to use some markers because I love using markers with uh, greetings that have multiple fonts. So I'm going to take my gorgeous grape and ink up the script, the scripty word, which is the word marvelous. And these are our stamp and write markers. So they're water-based markers. They are not alcohol-based. You don't want to use alcohol-based markers on your stamps. Then I'm going to take my basic black and ink up the words your simply. And I'll give it a huff. That re-moistens the ink. And I'm going to stamp it just a little bit closer to the bottom of my rectangle. Okay. So we've got our stamping done. Now we can go ahead and start assembling. So I've got my note card here. And the this one is going to be a horizontal card because of the the way that my paper goes. So you can make it a vertical card if your paper isn't directional, but if your paper is directional, you'll find that you'll have to make it a horizontal card. All right, so we'll just add some multi-purpose glue. This is gonna go in the middle. And then 
this one is going to go in the middle. Did you notice the first two cards that I did did not have twine on them? That is very rare for me. All right, that's going to go on there. And then we'll bring this one in. So working on both cards like this at one time kind of speeds things up a little bit. So pretty. All right, this guy's gonna go on dimensionals. And right in the center. Okay, now this one I am going to add a little bit of twine. So I'm gonna bring in my white Baker's twine and tie a bow. Let's trim it here. I'm gonna make some relatively large loops here. And add a dot of glue right in the center of my postage shape here, my postage rectangle. Put that at an angle. And then this butterfly is going to get dimensionals. Actually, I'm going to use some of my little ones. And I'm just going to cut a couple little narrow strips and I'll put one going across the top here oops and one going at the bottom knowing that try to figure out where it's sticky here knowing that my twine the knot of my twine Okay, I can't figure out where it's sticky. <laughs> the knot of my twine is going to sit in the in between. Okay, these small little pieces are tricky to figure out if they get twisted around. Let's use my paper piercing tool here. There we go. All right. And this guy's gonna sit right over top. Look how pretty that is. And then this one is gonna get a little piece of a dimensional, but right at the top. So I'm gonna cut a strip and then I will cut that strip in half. I'll just put that piece back. And this is gonna go across the top. And I'll put a little bit of glue right at the bottom because he is going to sit, or she, right here. Okay, now our greeting for this one, this is gonna go across like this. I'm gonna leave it long, but angle cut it. And you know, it's a little wide. I'm. Uh, let's see how straight I can cut this. I wanna trim it a little narrower. Okay, and then we'll take our dimensionals again. Again, I'm gonna use around the edges, cut a little, couple little pieces. And I'm gonna put them on either end because they're gonna sit over top. This is gonna sit over top of our butterfly. So just like that. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers and just curl up 
the wings on the butterfly a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna finish these off by adding, good morning, Tracy. We're gonna add some gems. Let's do one here. And then on this one, All right, so now we need to do the inside. So I am going to bring back my paper trimmer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these in half, approximately in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. And this one I'm gonna cut in half as well. And we're gonna take this piece and we'll put it across here. Actually, I'm going to flip it over and use the other side. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it on the bottom for this one. that on there. So, so far, this is the only waste is this tiny little bit, this eighth of an inch that we're cutting off. There's that one. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it across like this. And this one, I'm gonna go like this. Just flip it over so that we've got a little bit, we've got some contrasting patterns there. It's gonna hang off the edge a little bit. And I'll trim that. All right, so there are cards three and four. We still have this piece as our scrap, so three and four. So, and here's another version using that same pattern paper that I used for cards one and two. And, oh, that's the wrong one, this one. So there we go. So again, these are quick and easy designs that you can use over and over and over using different pattern paper. And I mean, you could use a stamped image or a die cut floral image. It doesn't have to be butterflies in the center, right? All right. So now we've got card number five. And this time, instead of using those postage dies, I wanted to show that you could do the same kind of idea, um, but use it with a use use a punch instead. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use this um, Hartfeld Hexagon Punch. I'm gonna slide it in as far as it will go and center it side to side. And then I'm gonna punch that out. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a scrap piece of white and my greeting. I'm gonna use, not this one, I'm gonna use this one again. You're Simply Marvelous. And I'm gonna ink it up the same way I did. So with gorgeous grape for the scripty word, and then basic black for the block lettering. I'll give it a half and I'll stamp it down. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to punch this out, but I'm going to position my letters closer to the bottom of the punch. Okay. And now I wanna make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna grab a just a scrap piece of, um, 
cardstock and my seal adhesive. Just gonna put a little bit of adhesive on here and I'm gonna attach this. This will allow me to kind of feed this in and hold it in place so that I can reposition my punch and change the size of it. So now it's a similar shape, it just changes the size a little bit. All right, now we can bring in our last white card base. So this is gonna go on here like this. This is gonna go on here. And then we need another butterfly. So I'm gonna use, from my second sheet, I'm gonna use this one. And again, I want him going this way. And we're gonna use our, just like we have with all the other ones, we're gonna use our blending brush with Gorgeous Grape. And we'll use our bone folder, curl it up. Okay, and then we can start assembling. So this is really, really quick and easy when you do when you do it with the punch. You have a little bit more flexibility with a die because you can position it wherever you want with a die. Whereas a punch, you're limited to how far in you can slide your punch. Okay, so that's gonna go on there. This is gonna get popped up using some dimensionals. And it'll fit right in here. And then our butterfly, we can add that. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of around the edge, a piece, a piece from around the edge here. And I'm gonna put it on the wings because it's go the butterfly is gonna sit partially on this raised bit and partially off. Just add a little bit of liquid glue. And again, I'm gonna be mindful so that my card or my butterfly doesn't hang off the edge of my card. Just pop that on there. That'll give it a little bit more stability having those dimensionals under there. And then we can pull in some dots. And I think this time, because there's a little bit of Blackberry Bliss in there, I think I'm gonna use the Blackberry Bliss ones. All right, so there's the outside of our card. And then for the inside, we can use this leftover shape. <coughs> so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the bottom portion and add that right on here like that. I'll flip it over. I'll trim it off. And then this piece I'll add down here. All right, and there is card number five. And here is card number five with the Celebration DSP. So I really wanted to use this, um, this pattern paper and show you guys that it doesn't have to be for Valentine's Day. So you saw that I made some congratulations with it and you're simply marvelous. So it doesn't, even though it's got hearts on it, it doesn't mean it has to be for Valentine's Day. All right. 
Now we've got one more, and this one is going to be a bit of a fun fold. So we're gonna bring in the, our last two pieces that we have. And remember we scored this piece, so we're gonna fold this along the score lines. So this piece measures five and a quarter by 12 inches, and then it's scored at four and eight. So let's see here. Oh, we want it going. Oh, you know what? It's okay, it'll still work. Okay, so you want it to sit flat. So once you've got it folded in like this, just use your bone folder and go over it so it sits flat. Or some of our butterflies are going the wrong direction, but that's okay. They'll probably be covered ended up end up being covered over anyways. Okay, so for this one, I've done some die cutting. So remember that full sheet of white that I suggested you guys pull out so that you can do some cutting and die cutting and stamping from. So I cut from that piece of white, I cut a piece that measures, let me just check my measurements here, three and three quarters by five. This is gonna go on the inside. So it's gonna go on here. And then I also die cut from the perennial postage, the two squares, so both sizes. So I've got those two here. And then I also cut the third smallest rectangle from white. And then we are going to use a greeting, the, a greeting, we're going to use some more of this to stamp a greeting on it. And, um, and then from some gorgeous grape, I cut out the fourth smallest postage rectangle. And then I have my quarter sheet of cardstock here. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. So my flaps are folded in. Okay. So I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to add adhesive to this. So this is a great card design to really showcase both sides of your patterned paper. This is just going to go in the center of that quarter sheet of grape cardstock. Sorry, I'm going a little bit further down here. You guys can't see what I'm doing here. Then this piece is gonna go in the center. So it's gonna end up covering over these butterflies that are upside down, so it's not gonna matter. All right, that looks like it's in the center. Okay, now we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna bring this in and our butterflies. So I want to use the smallest full butterfly for this one. And then from our first sheet, we're going to use this guy. Okay. Oh, and I just realized I wanted to keep this in here. So one of the things that you can do is you can use these as stencils. So I'll move this up a little bit. Position my butterfly back in there. And then I've got some post-it notes here. So I'm gonna stick some post-it notes around the edges because I'm gonna use my blending brush and add some color to this butterfly, but I don't want to get any straight edges. Okay, so I'm gonna cover that over. Let's just cover this up so it doesn't dry out. Okay, and now because my butterfly isn't stuck in here, I just, I really need to hold it and be very careful. And even if it is stuck in there, you haven't taken it out, you will want to be very gentle with it. So we're gonna bring back some gorgeous grape. And I'm gonna use a really light hand
And not only am I adding color to my butterfly, but I'm also using it as a stencil. And you'll see when I lift it up, I'll have like a subtle butterfly on the background of my inside piece. Okay, and while we've got this out, this butterfly is actually gonna go this way. a wipe and we'll close this up and we'll take these pieces off so I just keep these post-it notes so I have a six by eight cello bag that I keep my butterflies in and I just stick the post-it notes right onto the cello bag so that I can use them over and over again so now we've got this nice little subtle butterfly pattern on the inside of our card. Okay, we'll set that aside. We've got this little strip left, so we'll add that to the top of our card. And then we're gonna do one more thing to the inside. Okay, I'm gonna use this greeting that says, sending love and best wishes. I'm gonna ink it up the same way I did the other card, or the other greetings. So gorgeous grape on the scripty words, basic black on the block lettering. Huff, and then I'm going to stamp it on here. Okay, now we can bring back our card base. And this is going to go, I just realized I made a mistake. That's okay. I shouldn't have stamped this on this layer, but... That's all right, it will still work. Look at how pretty that is on the inside. Okay, so what I had done on my sample was I had stamped sending love and best wishes on here, and then I had my butterfly on here so that there was something on this layer of the card. So I think, I do like it with this though. Okay, let me think on that. Okay, let's go back to the front of the card. We're gonna take this strip and we're gonna turn this strip into a belly band. So this is gonna hold our card closed. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna use my cutting mat to make sure it's straight. So there's a ruler on here or a grid on here. And I'm gonna fold it over, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make sure it's not too tight and then fold this over because I want it to slide nicely. I'll put a little strip of multi-purpose glue here and then another strip here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Terry. There's gotta be another greeting that I could put on that. So I might just stick that on there on the inside because I really like the look of it and then just find another greeting that will work in there. Okay, and then this is gonna go in the center here. So I've got my belly band on there. I'm just gonna make sure it slides. Yeah, it slides nicely. I'm gonna position it in the center and I'm gonna add some glue just on the belly band because I don't wanna stick this to the back of this because then I won't be able to slide my belly band off, right? Okay, 
So that's gonna go on there. And then this is gonna get some dimensionals. Let's move these out of the way here. This is gonna go on here in the center. And then we're gonna curl up the wings of our butterfly. We're gonna take our Baker's twine bow, which I've already tied. We'll add a little dot of glue right in the center. Flip this over, we'll grab some dimensionals, just a couple little pieces here. Actually, I've got one piece here. We'll put at the base and then another one at the top so that the knot sits in between. Okay, all right. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? is I'm gonna make a slight alteration and this is gonna work, this will work out great. Okay, first we're gonna bring in some of these dots. Look how close I am to finishing these. So excited. I love finishing up embellishments. Okay, look how pretty that is. Oh, I love it. All right, so this is gonna slide off. And then on the inside, I'm gonna put this on here, I'm just gonna put it on flat. And I'm gonna stamp happy, happy birthday. I'll find a happy birthday stamp that will work, that will fit on here. Actually, I think I know, I was using one this morning that I think will work perfectly. Let's see if I can find it. This one will fit. Okay. I'm gonna stamp happy birthday. So on my sample card, I actually stamped happy birthday on the outside, which I'll show you. Um, but this one, because I, I uh, stamped in the wrong spot, we are just gonna make this work for us. I think the card looks great on the outside even without a greeting. I'm just using my stamp and write markers on here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're gonna stamp this right in the middle here. And so this greeting is from the Circle Saying stamp set. So I use this happy birthday here. We'll add our butterfly on here, curl it up a little bit, and there we go. So now we can close this. We can slide the belly band back on. Position that in the center. Let's just trim the end of this a little bit. And there is our sixth card. So the only pieces that we have left of that pattern paper are these three tiny little bits, little scraps. So let me bring, let me, first of all, let me share this one. So here is the one that I created with the greeting across the top, which works nicely, but it looks, it looks great without the greeting as well. Okay, so let's bring all six cards back in. There we go. Look how pretty those are. All created with just one piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. So pretty. All right, so before I say goodbye for today, I just wanted to remind you guys that registration is still open for this month's class to go. 
It's the perennial postage class to go. So we are using the same product products that I've used today. We're creating six different cards. Here are four of them. So we've got this one. We've got this one. And there are four different options. So whether you live in Canada or not, there is an option. If you live outside of Canada, the tutorial is available to purchase. And I've linked that in the description below, as well as where you can find all the information for the class to go. All right. So I hope to see you in class. I hope you guys all have a fabulous weekend and I will see you again next week. Take care. Bye guys.